about what you do. Okay, thank you very much, Vanessa. And good afternoon. Good afternoon to everybody. What a great thing to see you out there. The students from our VET school are out there in the audience. And they're out here to listen to what we're going to say about food. It's so great to have you here. And firstly, I'd like to comment to you. And say welcome to you in San Sebastian. You can listen this afternoon in interpreting the different languages that are available. I'm going to speak in Basque and we'll also be speaking different languages uh, with my colleague Diego as well. Thank you. The presentation by Diego will be in Spanish. But I want to uh, say a special warm welcome to all the catering VET schools that are here today. There's people from Alava. We've got the Egebide uh, College and the Gamara College. And from Vizcaya, we've got with us the Archanda College and the Hotel and Catering College from Leoa and from Peñascal as well. And from Gipuzkoa, we've got the Sebank Center and the Ayala School. Thank you so much, therefore, to all of the teaching staff and all the students for having, for spending their time with us this afternoon and sharing this moment with us. At this International Conference on Vocational Education Training, we've spent already two days about digital transformation, also about intelligence, artificial intelligence, and we've also spoken a lot about humankind. A lot's been said about technology as the world that we've, a word that we've heard time and time and time over the last couple of days, which is the future. People talk about the future. What do we expect from the future? Currently, I'm just going to invite you to just sit back and think for a few minutes because there's the word that we want to share with you and that's the word the past, past. When we talk about food and Basque gastronomy, the food is actually, the word food is very important, both the past and the present. Of course, it's going to be an important word in the future. We shouldn't forget that we're all heading towards uh, the future, but we can't forget where we come from, what our origins are, and the amount of work that's been done so far, and how much work has been done in the Basque country in on our land, how much work has been done with our products, the produce that comes from our farmhouses and that have been uh, taken and transformed so that they can be served in our restaurants. Let's, let's just look back in time. What are we? What were we and where are we going to? So I'm going to invite all of those of you that have come from abroad to come and visit us because there's a lot of you who have come to see our forests, the sea, our rivers, and to enjoy everything, all, all those produce that we're able to get from our land, from everything that it produces. So let's just have a quick look at a video. Let's watch this video and it'll give you an idea of our farmhouses, the kitchens in those farmhouses. That uh, time of day when everybody came together in a farmhouse and spent some time around the hearth. Because actually a pandemic has taught us a lot about uh, going home and returning home and spending time around the hearth. It's not so long ago that we spent time together 
having a breakfast, lunch and dinner. Let's just spend some time watching this video. I hope you enjoy it. Siempre se ha dicho que It's always been said that you need to know your past to understand the present and to prepare yourselves for the future. Our planet, our earth, woods, the sea, our rivers have given us all the food that we need to for our subsistence generation after generation. And human development has always been uniquely tied to the history of food. It was when fire first appeared, when food became linked to gastronomy and the cooking of food and the preparation of food. The possibility of cooking food gave humankind a new perspective on things and over time this gastronomy has developed with the different civilizations that have populated the earth with the common denominator which is to improve our diet and enjoy the pleasures of gastronomy chestnuts beans and apples have actually sustained many families in the rural communities and are still very important part of our heritage Sabemos la importancia que We know how important cider was in transatlantic trips of many of our seafaring ancestors. And this is something that has uh, been a part of Basque gastronomy. And also farmhouses. Farmhouses have been a, a key role to how Basque food and gastronomy has evolved over centuries. Because it was in farmhouses that animals were domesticated and were used to work the earth and then also used for the main dishes of uh, places. These farmhouses where families would come together for, of course, breakfast, lunch and dinner. All the important chefs of today talk about how important their roots are and how united they are with their pasts. Desde un punto de vista de alimentación, both meat and fish for many centuries have been the uh, main food items eaten by the Basque people, and they're still very present in today's diet anchovies, hake, cod, all coming from traditional recipes that are centuries old. So Throughout the centuries, you can talk about 
Basque traditional cuisine as a cuisine that is based on the quality of its produce that is simply cooked and it's the actual, the product itself that is the true star. And also, let's not forget cheese and curds. These and other products really make up the long list of recipes that you can find in traditional Basque cuisine. So it's the coming together of tradition and modernity, which is what has made Basque traditional cuisine something that's well known, not just locally, but around the world. We respect our traditions, and what we do is we showcase what is ours, not just uh, what is ours at a food level, but the whole of society. So that's a little bit about our food heritage, our cuisine. And that's what the Basque country is really all about. It's the country which has the most number of uh, Michelin stars in the world per capita. And now... I'm going to just read the Michelin-starred restaurants that we have in the Basque country. There are many of them. I actually probably won't be able to remember them all. But these three are quite important. Akalare, Martin, Berasategui, Arzak, Azurmendi. And with two stars, Mugariz. And with one star, one Michelin star, Martin Berasategui, Emegarote, Echanovi, Atrier, Amelia, Eneko Larabetso, Eneko Acha, Boroan, Achevari, Mina, Nerua, Zarate, Sortsiko. Well, the, our presenters reading the names of these restaurants that are Michelin star. Elcano, Alameda, Zuberoa, Emendi Campo, Beño Escaluna Quinere. And what's more? There are Basque uh, chefs that also have uh, two stars and one star. So it's a, just a good, it uh, goes to prove our tradition, our work, our cuisine, our gastronomy is famous around the world. And I'd also like to mention something in this regard, which is that there are many chefs that have come out of vocation education and training of VET. And actually, I'd like to say that the Leoa Catering College has produced 13 Michelin stars. And there's another one that's come from another college in the Basque country. So let's just remember that. And that's what that applause is all about. We do deserve the applause. Earlier, I saw how it said how important it was to s see where we're coming from, to remember where we came from. We're going to be looking towards the future, but we don't want to lose our roots because we really do owe a lot to all of the people that have looked after the land. And we owe a lot to our students. And what we want to show uh, our students is where our
cuisine is, where our gastronomy is and why it's immersed in this digital transformation and what we should be doing and because we need to do it properly and analyze our values and together with these values we need to get across our the knowledge that's held in our society to face up to the future and in this case in technique as we're going to be mentioning later on we're working as a network with other catering colleges and we've got Diego Coquillat with us here today and he works alongside us his I'm going to read his biography just quickly to you and then I'm going to hand the floor over to him so that he can tell us a little bit about, especially at this time when we've just emerged from a pandemic where we've all been eating at home, we've never actually uh, been lacking food on the table, but we need to know where we are and where we want to be. So let's hear from a collaborator from the Basque VET sector who uh, cooperates with us and who works with us in collaborative networks with all the catering colleges in the Basque country. Diego Coquillat is a researcher. He's an international speaker and he knows about the digital uh, process and digital transformation of uh, many restaurants. He's a lecturer in several institutions and he's an advisor on digitization for restaurant groups and chefs. He also has a digital uh, publication, diegocoquillat.com, and he's uh, created several awards and written several books. So good afternoon, Diego. The floor is yours. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thanks, Marie Jose. Thanks to all of you for being out there. It's a true pleasure after so many Zoom conferences, so many Zoom classes to be back here on the stage is a complete reboot. It's like a reset. It's so great to be up here on the stage and, and this fantastic building. This is an article that I wrote about a year ago, right in the middle of the pandemic, which I entitled, Welcome to the New World of Catering, the New World of Food. Well, what I tried to do was to reflect this uh, historical change that we were seeing in the world of restaurants. We were going through a really key moment in time that was leaving its scars, the pandemic has left its scars, but also a series of opportunities, windows of opportunity. What I want to try to show you today is like a photo fit picture of what is actually happening in the uh, catering sector, in the gastronomy, restaurant, hotel and catering sector, so that we can together maybe draw some conclusions Re regarding this important moment that we find ourselves in. And to do so, I'd like to start and uh, just and show you what things were like before the pandemic. This is a graph that appears in Google Trends about the Basque country, about what was happening over the previous 10 years before the pandemic due in the catering industry. And basically, it's an upward graph where in December 2019, we were at historical maximum figures. The word restaurant had never had so much interest in this space. Restaurants were mushrooming uh, uh, all over the place and nobody, n n nothing made us think that we were going to um, be uh, thrown into a completely different world just a few days later, days and months later. People talk about, spoke about the uh, restaurant bubble. Uh, the number of restaurants uh, were growing. They were growing in size as well throughout the whole of Spain. So it's really important to understand that we were at historical maximum levels before the pandemic. The relevance of restaurants at that time was key. And what's more, three figures we saw globally that just go went to prove the time that we were around, the key moment. An increasing percentage of the population was consuming more food from restaurants than from supermarkets. These curves are from the US and they show how in March 2015, for the first time in the US, Americans were uh, spending more in restaurants than at supermarkets. 
And this is a curve that actually is true for many countries in Europe. And what it showed was that restaurants were not just a part of a dining experience, but they'd become a key part of food suppliers and food suppliers to feed the population. A second piece of uh, information for the historic moment is that this internal consumption of restaurants on many occasions, the times that they were consuming, uh, say people spent more time in restaurants than at home. That meant that m more people, an increasing number of people spent more time in restaurants than at home, than eating at home. Mm. And for those people, what they enjoyed, not just the food, but the experience of eating in a restaurant. And the third item, which is quite interesting, is that the outside time that we're consuming also grew. What do I mean by that? Uh, consumption of a uh, restaurant produce, but not inside the restaurant. That is home deliveries, takeaways, were growing in double figures around the world. So what was the equation here? There were three items that were growing in a unique way and that never done so quickly in history. That is uh, consumption in restaurants, these restaurants have become food suppliers for the population. Then internal moments in the restaurant and the amount of time that this people spend in the restaurant is increasing in comparison to the amount of time that people eat at home. And then thirdly, the consumption of uh, products from restaurants, but not at restaurants or not in restaurants, i.e. deliveries. And these are what we call comfort moments. You know, you feel lazy, so you pick up the phone and ask for a home delivery. And restaurants connect to the population in that way. So that's another way of connecting the population. These three elements for the first time in history were growing exponentially. But from this moment onwards, when the pandemic arrived, everything changed completely. This is the graph of Standard & Poor's that represents restaurants in the US. And here you can see the tremendous off the clip drop that there was just a weeks after uh, January 2020. Um, and what happened, this is the graph for the Basque country, just a few weeks after historical maximum, all this increase of t a 10 year increase was virtually lost in just a few weeks. And you can see in this graph, how it was truly a disaster. The situation became really, really complicated. But behind this graph, you've got these new opportunities that suddenly emerge in the sector, not only to try to uh, change uh, the fact that nobody can go to a restaurant anymore, and but people still need to eat. What about this comfort market that is going to increase so importantly? And here you can see in this study that was carried out, as opposed to, we're looking at the durability of uh, businesses. Uh, how long a business could survive without invoicing? And the worst in all of these were restaurants. If they didn't invoice in 16 days, they would just go bankrupt. So the sector needed to be reinvented. And we started to see that the sector was making proposals that until then were virtually impossible. Many restaurants and bars were going to be like the HQ and the kitchens of our neighborhood. So bars and restaurants were allowed to sell coffees and food to take away. So restaurants' relationship with customers actually changed. And the way the digital uh, world accelerated in just those months was almost the same as it had done in a decade previously. It's unheard of. Those people that were completely against enjoying food outside restaurants, which were chefs, all of a sudden started to encourage people to uh, enjoy haute cuisine with a home delivery. For example, the Sandoval brothers said, you know, this was inviolable, impossible in December 9, 2019. We started to see these little boxes 
which we call the new uh, plates up. You could see how these new possibilities in the sector suddenly stepped up to the plate, as it were. And even great chefs showed us how you could eat their fantastic produce at home. Some of them even created alliances with uh, distribution companies, something that which previously we, in previous weeks would have been very, very unlikely. We see an inverse correlation with the previous graph. We see that there now no one is there physically, but everything that uh, it goes with delivery is increasing in just a few days. Oh, and all deliveries start to grow in a historic manner. We are digitizing a new habit that up till then had been minoritary. Food delivery, we see how it grows from 2013 and reaches the maximum levels during those weeks. Uh, wine, delivery to meat, deliveries. Uh, digital habit is being generated. Pa a paella delivery too. Even a, a bar delivery. I don't understand this uh, really well, but it's uh, something to bear in mind too. And even more, we start to relate through our mobiles and through video calls with our relatives, friends. They really grow. Does anyone imagine uh, the pandemic without digitization, without being able to connect digitally with our friends, our school, our company? It starts to go in a significant manner. Everything that has to do with video calls, video training, Zoom, uh, more than a 4,000%. I say that I live in Zoom because that's the place I spend more of my time during the day. So it starts to um, grow. And all these speeds up uh, digitization process that in some cases hadn't even almost started. We uh, stop being occasional uh, buyers to being regular buyers uh, in uh, the digital world. We uh, purchase all kinds of services, but the top three are technology that is needed for that habit, entertainment that we need to be able to um, pass the time, and then food. Food is the third category that uh, grows, as well as fashion. So we find ourselves in a context uh, of a speeding up, and the fundamental key to be understood is that technology, thanks to the pandemic, becomes a fundamental connector between users and the way they eat. Why? Because it uh, provides a value. We're talking about uh, food and restaurants. We connect with them very easily. Today, we can, can ask uh, to get food delivered at home in just a few seconds. You can even uh, customize it uh, depending on your habits. It's uh, more economic in some cases than purchasing, cooking, and eating. And for me, the big change is that you, you can do this wherever you are. You can connect. Uh, and this radically transforms the sector and the relationships. And we generate a new product, which is eating. Eating becomes the biggest digital product in history. Where all sectors, I'm talking about all sectors, sectors that were not present in uh, the food industry, start to see eating as the big digital product. Mainly due to two reasons. First of all, because it's one of the things we do um, most times more than 20 times per month, more than 1,000 times per year. Just digitizing at 10 or 20% of this eating habit, we are seeing the biggest uh, digital market in history. And the second aspect is that restaurants mm, are not only the origin, but also the origin and the destination. That means the customers go to the restaurants, but also now the restaurants go to their customers. And this uh, makes us uh, face a market, a new opportunity that is uh, historic in the 
industry and sector. We are going towards a hybrid uh, model. We've seen the maximum levels uh, with physical presence, but also maximum levels uh, digitally. And I think we are going to reach that uh, balance where the sector is going to be able to face the demand uh, both uh, in the restaurants but digitally. So that's the opportunity because they complement each other. Fundamentally, why? Because the times for consumption are different. The customer is saying, no, I'm not uh, mm, deciding not to go to restaurants. I'm saying I want to receive uh, food at home because there's a sports event, because I don't want to cook that day. And restaurants are also covering that need. And many people are fed through the restaurants. So the opportunity and the spectrum of opportunity for the sector, thanks to the technology, it becomes very relevant. What have we learned throughout these months? We've learned that the customer experience has changed and that that exchange is now that experience is now digital it can be shared it's limited and uh, as i said before you can uh, do it from anywhere let's look at this elements first of all it's now digital this article uh, was uh, written uh, for digital restaurants now uh, customers uh, share physical and digital uh, environments Constantly, you share pictures through Twitter, WhatsApp, Instagram. This is part of our daily lives. Therefore, we don't differentiate physical levels and digital levels. For most of us, it's ex exactly the same thing. We are trained digitally, but also physically. We uh, speak with our friends uh, using both uh, formats. Therefore, there's only one context. Now any website or any Instagram uh, for a restaurant has all of the information. You can uh, book a table, you can order food, you can purchase uh, different uh, um, meals through their Instagram. So they are connecting uh, the um, food uh, sector. And Google is uh, obsessed with restaurants. Why? because they know most of their traffic is going through uh, how food is, uh, has become a digital product that is constantly re providing new services. You can book online. Now you can also uh, queue virtually. And in fact, here we see the visits of a um, website for a restaurant. Analytics uh, says that it has uh, 28,000 uh, uh, searches. Of each uh, 20 physical uh, visits, one is in the uh, website of the restaurant and the other 19 are in uh, Google. In fact, Google is uh, killing these uh, uh, websites for restaurants because they want the users uh, to um, be a part of their big data that we will talk about later. And this brings us to a fundamental element to understand, and that is the door of the restaurant or of any business that has to do with uh, food and wine is not made of uh, wood and glass. It's digital. More than a 70% of the customers are accessing through digital environments. Today, the most important street in San Sebastian is called the internet. So to develop your projects, you need to bear this in mind. Second uh, fundamental aspect, the experience is something you can share. And I am convinced that you, uh, in fact, are those that are uh, sharing these experiences. This explains it really well. Does the mobile go uh, by the uh, fork or the knife? Today, it's impossible not to see mobile phones in a restaurant. Oh, wait, wait, don't touch anything. I'm going to take a picture. Does that, uh, is that something you uh, are used to now? This is part of the experience. Now, these uh, physical environments are shared digitally. 
and 70% of uh, Spanish people take pictures of uh, what they're eating. Uh, 74% women, 64% millennials, and 64% men and 80% millennials. So sharing your restaurant experience has become something normal. But we are also seeing that this is happening digitally in delivery, in the magic of unboxing, people that share the way which we receive the uh, product at home. This experience is also shared digitally. In London, we have Instagram, they have Instagram packs, and you get a pack to share your pictures uh, before you leave the restaurant. Why? Because the restaurant knows this has a communication value. This was an interview at ABC where I said that Instagram is a tailor-made suit for food and beverages. And there are two aspects that you need to bear in mind. Today, the new communication language is image. I don't tell you about it, I show you in a picture. And you need to realize that the story of your restaurants and of your food is not told by the restaurant. It's told by its customers by sharing their experiences through um, digital formats. Of course, uh, some uh, favor this. For example, here you can even um, have your uh, mobile there or a movement uh, to be able to do videos. So you have the possibility of sharing and this elements and there's even people that have the logo of the restaurant in the, on the product because uh, that's like saying please share it and even uh, printers that already print on uh, beer coffee and other beverages this uh, brings us to another uh, concept and that is the digital tip. The digital tip means that someone shares a picture of your restaurant or business and this is fundamental. This is the biggest communication value you will have in this new digital era. The third element that has to do with experience means that this experience is uh, unlimited. Up till now for 80 years we've been studying uh, for customers what's happening when the customer goes in the restaurant and then leaves. But now this experience is digital, it's much broader. So the customer is a customer before they arrive to the restaurant and they continue to be so when they leave. The experience combines digital elements with the physical elements. So we're not only taking into account what happens when the customer is at the uh, restaurant, but also the before and after. In fact, online bookings grow at 55% during the summer. Customers are also booking digitally. They are moving towards this uh, digital way of doing things. And an 80% of um, or a report confirms that a 90% of Spaniards uh, trust on the opinions of a trip advisor and an 80% uh, check that uh, social networks to choose a restaurant. So all these shared experiences are really important. And this is the last uh, big study carried out in the US where you we see that restaurants uh, have more content than any other sector regarding a amount of content transferred by customers. And we're now going a step forward up to a point that uh, uh, positive comments on TripAdvisor help a restaurant get a loan. This was a study that we shared in our newspaper where a bank confirmed that in the rating to get a loan to a restaurant, they have had included TripAdvisor comments. When we talked with the bank and we said, why have you included this information? Their answer was uh, very clear. And they said, Diego, how do you know if uh, something is uh, working well or not? Diego, so all this information that can be shared is influencing the value, the financial value of the restaurant. Do you think that a, a restaurant with three stars in TripAdvisor is the same as uh, one? In fact, uh, in the U.S., 
you uh, also have a relationship between uh, the insurance and the stars that you have online. And we also see how restaurants uh, sell their uh, food through, for example, Instagram. Here we have an example of a restaurant in Madrid and through the picture you can choose what you want to uh, buy. Or here you have steaks. This one has uh, 28 million followers and through Instagram you can uh, Purchase. This is the example of the Roca Brothers. You can uh, purchase their desserts. So these are all digital uh, doors. This is Vivo by Dani Garcia, where you can purchase experiences on Instagram. So restaurants are opening new pathways, digital pathways, so that the customers can get in. In fact, uh, filters are not used on Instagram. What you get is toppings. Here you can customize your uh, pizza through this uh, uh, topping filters. So it's an unlimited experience and it's important to understand this as well as the fact that the customer is a customer before they get to the restaurant and after. And the fourth element we've learned uh, about is uh, movement. Customers decide on the where. This graph is the one I've showed before. We see the maximum on delivery food during the pandemic, but it has continued to grow. The trend uh, continues existing. In Spain, it has grown a lot. Delivery food has grown uh, a lot. Delivery and takeaway concentrate a 36% of the expense on uh, restaurants, 15 points over what there was in 2019. So this... Uh, experience that is so comfortable is also growing and it's an interesting market for restaurants. Dark kitchens, the kitchens um, that uh, provide uh, only delivery services already have a, a, a very big uh, turnover, more than 740 million. And to see what is happening in the sector in 2020, around uh, 40 million uh, uh, dollars were uh, um, invoice uh, that had to do with uh, food. By 2030, there will be $400,000 million. This has just uh, started. It's the tip of the iceberg. And this is not only for change and groups. Uh, chefs, as we saw before, are also involved. Exclusive uh, um, foods made by uh, chefs uh, through Cook Unity. And uh, have a look at this because it's very interesting. And of course, technology. Google works on deliveries because uh, they want to be involved. They have data of all of this. So now you can receive your delivery wherever you are. You don't need to be in the restaurant or at home or at the office. Wherever you are, they can geolocalize you and take your delivery. This robot has uh, um, delivered uh, uh, more than 17,000 orders in uh, Europe and even cars. This car is at a critical point in the city and they anticipate demand. This is the clear example of what a restaurant in movement would be. Look at this kind of uh, cars in China. In China, como veis, bueno, pues, eh, exist you can see these cars in China, and they can also deliver food. So we've learned that technology is very important to connect uh, users with food, that it really uh, provides interesting values and has generated a market, the market of the experience that continues to grow, but also the market of food in restaurants and the market that has to do with delivery. I know that many of the projects you're developing in digital transformation have to do with uh, all this evolution in restaurants and in the sector. Mani uh, Jose, maybe you could please tell us about what you're doing in the uh, VT colleges. Yes, Diego, this is a historic uh, moment in the sphere of uh, uh, food and in 
uh, vocational training, we're going through a historic uh, time because we're working on things differently in collaborative uh, working networks amongst uh, different uh, colleges. Working on digital transformation in uh, the food industry. Your colleges participate in this uh, applied bioeconomics uh, vocational uh, training transformation. We are working on different multidisciplinary projects. The students, the teaching staff of uh, colleges that um, focus on different areas have common projects. Where the uh, agriculture, food industry areas, and the hospitality area work together with a management area, marketing area, and you also see there another area that has to do with um, health. Mainly, our students have to tell us how can we can digitize our restaurants so that those that have special needs, uh, the elders, uh, those that might have a disability, what kind of furniture they need, what kind of humanized technology they need so that those restaurants are also inclusive for them. Electricity, electronics, all these other areas that we work on on VET. We are working together to be able to achieve a digital transformation without forgetting our past, being aware of the present, but looking towards the future that Diego has just explained. So we work in different spheres, and robotics is really important. We've heard about what's going to happen with artificial intelligence, 3D printing that we're already working on, and everything that has to do with uh, food innovation. What are going to be the new food products? What are the food products that we need for elders, children, sports uh, persons, functional uh, food products that we're working on in uh, vet centers, the circular economy. We are now going from a linear economy that we're all used to. We uh, buy, use, and discard, but now we have to go back to the habits of the past, what our uh, parents and grandparents uh, did. They worked with uh, local products, with uh, uh, those products that they could find nearby. And in uh, BT, we have the circular economy platform to tie and give uh, value once again to those uh, products that sometimes are not used in the um, catering uh, schools and also in many homes. Through this uh, innovation, we are creating new uh, food products through the waste that is generated in our hospitality schools. And there are many practical examples that they are working on to be able to be entrepreneurs and create new products, to be able to give new value to them. We've, uh, for example, been able to create a um, chocolate uh, cream with uh, um, beans and uh, Maybe those uh, elders that cannot uh, eat uh, fish uh, products because they cannot swallow them, well, we've created something uh, new so that they can uh, swallow it and also uh, have the benefits of eating uh, fish products. So we're working also in agriculture, incorporating technology with the incorporation of uh, drones and uh, detection systems that allow us to see what's the situation of a crop at a specific uh, point in time. If there is a, a plaque that could affect for our uh, vineyards and what is the situation. All this uh, technology that uh, Diego has been explaining is also being implemented in our uh, colleges. And also we are training 
professionals and helping SMEs to be able to innovate and uh, progress together. It is also uh, historic the way in which we're working in the bioeconomics area. And I would like to thank the work of all the staff, all the teaching staff uh, that, that is working together to be able to create new professional profiles that will be demanded from the transformation in the food sector. That's why I now invite you to get to know our um, colleges. On screen, we will see one of the colleges where we're working on all these uh, things that Diego was mentioning and our labs in Technica. Impressive labs with uh, avant-garde technology that allow us to do applied uh, research studies. Because in VET, we also research and research is very important. When we like to work on applied research, because then this research goes to our companies to be able to empower these SMEs, these uh, companies, to, so that they also have an opportunity at a European level. So now let's check these labs and these uh, colleges through the video, and you will be able to see how we uh, work. Vocational training in the Basque Country is linked to the land and it's continuously progressing based on sustainability. Training of a quality in a growing sector where every day we see new opportunities and where innovation is always present in everything that has to do with the food sector in the Basque Country. Highly skilled uh, teaching staff, labs where we work on uh, food biotechnology, VET studies, healthy food, precision farming, environmental health, and develops uh, projects in different networks to provide practical content to its students that will be useful for their future careers. We have the best infrastructures, classrooms, uh, workshops, and the students can find in food a future that is linked to our traditions, but also to the new technologies that are being developed in the food sector. BT centers in the Basque Country bring together tradition with innovation applied in all different uh, spheres, like uh, using things like uh, virtual reality, robotics, new digital applications, 3D printing of uh, food products, circular economy, and sustainability. Innovation, technology, intelligence, and exchange of experience are always present in the training of our students and we continue with the tradition of uh, Basque uh, uh, cuisine, always uh, looking towards the future. A future based on the efficient use of the already existing resources, being sustainable, and uh, always thinking about future generations. All of this is done without forgetting uh, what has made us one of the best known regions in the world. Our values that have to do with uh, tradition and solidarity. 
important in uh, vocational training in the Basque country where we want to have a human sustainable development uh, being person-centered and always thinking about the environment. Me vais a permitir, porque que estoy viendo aquí a mis compañeros, compañeras, que me acompañan en este trabajo, que aunque yo hoy estoy aquí, es la representación de tantas... See, what we're seeing today is the representation of so many people who work together, Inés, Arancha, Maya, Uncal, Gorka, Lats, and Amaya, thanks to all of you, because this is all thanks to you. We're a team here. Diego, we've seen the past, we're now in the present, and now uh, the next question is, where are we going? Where are we heading? What's the future hold for us? This future that's now the present. We've got our students here from the uh, catering schools. Where are they going to be working? What are they going to work in? What's, what's going to change in this world? Well, I'd say that we are now working. Can you put my presentation up again, please? We're working in eight different areas of research and training. Let's look at some of them. Uh, you can see we're talking about robots, artificial intelligence, the Internet of Things, blockchain, big data, augmented reality, 3D and mobility. These are the eight areas where we are carrying out different uh, research and we're training with the VET colleges. And I don't think actually they represent the future, but actually they're uh, an opportunity in the present day for all of us. We need to start to understand that this intermediary, this connector, that was technology has actually changed and then has now become a smart technology that can converse with us, that can learn, that can predict, and it can even decide because it's got sufficient data to be able to do that now. From then onwards, you get things such as the artificial intelligence, which is having a huge effect on the hotel and catering industry. Look at how uh, much chatbots have um, increased in interest since 2018 when they first came onto the skin. And this just goes to show how this technology is something that's going to transform us. Restaurants where the person that actually makes the booking is actually your digital assistant. Uh, in this case, it's uh, a person from Alicante where Ellie is the person who works, uh, as it were, at this restaurant. She's your digital assistant that can allow you to make a booking. Uh, here, another company that's able to use artificial intelligence to manage all the uh, calls that a restaurant gets digitally. Here we can see Alexa that uses the voice and we can do carry out different kinds of uh, orders just by applying technology, which in this case is just a voice technology. McDonald's have uh, teamed up with IBM to automate uh, hamburger collection using AI. And this is happening with independent restaurants. They're teaming up with technology companies. So technology is becoming like the connecting uh, force of this sector, AI and image recognition to serve the perfect food. They can tell us whether this uh, dish has been properly properly created. Artificial intelligence, the secret ingredient of, the of new cuisine. And this explains in this article how algorithms can combine uh, different kinds of uh, foods to generate dishes which we feel will have a uh, high demand. In 2018, I uh, published this article, Google creates uh, robot clients for restaurants. What happens? Because everything we've seen so far is AI applied to the sector. What happens if this intelligence is given to the hands of the user? And we allow users to generate different things or do different actions. 
thanks to these products. Let's just have a look at this. Hola, Google. Puedes este, reservar una mesa para dos en el cocotero, el 2 eh, de a, a las 6 de la tarde. Bueno, si no está a las 6 disponible, puedo reservar a las 7. Vale, pues lo reservo para ti y te diré, te diré en los próximos 15 minutos si hay mesa. El cocotero, ¿cómo puedo ayudarte? Bueno, yo soy la ayudante de Google. Quisiera hacer una reserva para un cliente. Esta llamada será guardada. ¿Cuántas personas hay en la, para la reserva? Para dos personas. ¿A qué hora quieren venir? Al martes a las 7. Espera, voy a mirar. Bueno, no tengo a las 7, pero tengo a las 8. A las 8 está bien. Perfecto. ¿Puedo tener el nombre del cliente? Sí, Ana. Veremos a Ana el martes. Muchas gracias. Fantástico. Muchas gracias. Ana, una mesa para dos. ¿De acuerdo? And you can see how using these uh, virtual assistants we can generate this uh, relationship with the restaurant. Our article ends up saying that sooner or later our personal assistants will connect with the personal assistant of the restaurant and then you can imagine what's going to happen there. Another important element that is evolving is the Internet of Things. Millions of different devices that are connected to Internet without there being any need for a human intervention. So you get the fridge that connects different kinds of devices that we can include. This is another of the technologies which is growing increasingly. And also connected televisions that allow us to order takeaways, uh, watches that actually calculate your calorie burn, that then connect to a restaurant to ask for a meal that is going to reflect the amount of calories that you're allowed to eat, and a whole series of other buttons such as air tags that you can actually uh, add to your uh, bike and that connects directly into the internet, for example. This is an interesting uh, thing. This is the telepizza button. This is like a magnet that you have on your fridge, and you just uh, tap on it, and in a quarter of an hour, you've got your pizza at home. It's an easy way to operate. You just have to click on the fridge magnet that connects to your mobile, and directly in 15 minutes, you've got your home pizza delivered. These kind of buttons are just connected to the internet. Something else really interesting are these uh, trainers. What happens if we uh, connect these buttons? How many of us are wearing trainers today? Raise your hand. Uh, touch the tongue of your trainers. Imagine if you touch the tongue of your trainer and this is what happens. They're going to launch the third uh, version of this. It's the uh, tongue of your shoe that connects directly to the pizza restaurant. Of course, robotics is also evolving really, really quickly. And it's another thing that is of tremendous interest in Spain today. And here we're seeing how this is evolving. I woke up on Sunday with this uh, a news item from Alicante. Uh, restaurants that are using robot waiters to um, cover the lack of waiting staff. This is in Alicante. 
where these kinds of robots are all being used to overcome the problem that we have of a lack of waiters. What about these kinds of robots that can manage the uh, fryer automatically, the deep fryer? When we see this in Spain, this is going to really change things. And of course, the first paella in which no human intervenes, it was created in Leoa just a few days ago. And look at that, paella made by a robot. I know there are people here that have tried that pile. Was it tasty? Yes, it was, apparently. Very tasty. So we're talking about a pile or a dish. What happens if we want to actually feed 4,000 people that work in a factory? For that, there are other kind of robots that use uh, different uh, bowls to create these different kinds of foods for 4,000 people working at a factory. So, the present and robot management, we can also, to date we've seen robots that cook, but we could also move on to bartender robots. And in this case, we've got a beer serving robot who's in the T4, a Madrid uh, airport, Terminal 4. Look at that, if you want a beer, he's going to be able to serve six beers really quickly let's just have a look at the beer robot let's just sh i'll show you the video Six cervezas. La pena que no se puede beber aquí. Six beers. Shame is you can't drink them here. But anyway, here we've got another one. That's a cocktail maker, and you see, can do thousands of different combinations of cocktails for any bar, restaurant.
¿Quién se lo pide este? Para allí, para su casa o la escuela. Who wouldn't want that at home, even? Not just at the catering college. In addition to all these uh, fantastic things that do, that do all different kinds of things, have a look at this. The relationship between engineering, research, and gastronomy and restaurants is a very, very close relationship. If you could ask me what uh, sort of uh, things they're dealing with, well, I'd show the following. What they're doing is building robotized modular restaurants. What these restaurants do is they create the whole food experience without any kind of human intervention. So let's see what they can do. They're like containers. They're robotized uh, containers that can make salads, uh, pizzas, burgers, Asian food, ice cream, bakery products, whatever we happen to want. And there are two uh, functions for them. Both you can buy things directly from these restaurants, but also you, they can also be used for home deliveries. Just to give you an idea, let's have a look at how these kind of uh, robotized modular restaurants work. As you can see, everything has been served by robots. There's no humans there. They're all robots. Miles de ingenieros trabajando. Thousands of engineers working on the ro robotization, and there you can see some of them in shopping centers. But I want to go a f step further. I want you to see how they work internally. Let's suppose we order a pizza from this kind of a restaurant. Let's see what happens. We're seeing these in different shopping centers, and you'll see this uh, very shortly here. And I'd like to uh, finish by talking about big data. What's behind all of this? Millions of data, millions of data, which on many occasions allow us to digitize these habits. And we've seen that today. Digital kiosks, what they do is they read And they can do, they can give you, uh, your mobile is going to be able to read your face, and with that moment, you're going to have uh, the menus depending upon what you want, what you look like as well. Your match is also something in which in Google you can see how empathetic you are with your restaurants. You've got data from customers, from restaurants, and they can give you a percentage. The same thing goes when you go on a dating site. They know your level of compatibility with a restaurant in this case. So you no longer have to ask which your which is going to be your favorite dish in the restaurant. They can tell you what your favorite dish is going to be depending upon your 
type we've seen in Instagram, the recent updating of Instagram, where what they've included is the possibility of geolocating restaurants via photos. It, for example, for the first time, you can geolocate restaurants. And so food has become a digital product in this sense. Something else that's growing rapidly in the US is a restaurant subscription. The Netflix model, which is um, so popular as everything is being digitized, what we're seeing now that there are uh, different uh, restaurants allow you to subscribe. So you uh, pay a subscription fee, but instead of uh, seeing films, you can get products from your restaurant here. You can see two examples. In the first, you pay $5 a month and you can have uh, coffee from the shop or you can order it. The same goes for tacos. Subscriptions to restaurants Something else that's uh, increasing is the thank thanks to big data. Of course, all delivery companies, which are the ones that have most data, Amazon is also investing via delivery. These companies say that with big data, they can tell a restaurant where the best place to open is for that restaurant to be successful because they know what we eat, where we eat, what we're prepared to pay, and at what time so just can you imagine all these millions of customers that are transferring their eating habits into data? If we think now of three sectors, just to give you an idea of how important this is, three sectors that have been completely transformed. Uber. Uber is the biggest uh, a company of uh, cars with drivers without actually owning one single car. The same goes for Airbnb. It's the largest accommodation company without even having any building in its property. So what they've got a data, if we were to ask, be asked today, what the restaurants that manage most, what the companies that manage most restaurants in the world will probably say it was um, Google, Instagram, TripAdvisor, Uber Eats, and many, many others that are going to emerge. But these companies don't have one single restaurant. They don't own one single restaurant. They have figures about our, what we like to eat, and figures and data from customers and from the restaurants. Quite clearly, the major leaders in this sector aren't going to be uh, traditional restaurants, they're going to be technology companies that can sell or manage the hotel and catering and restaurant industry. And I'm going to end with the last uh, and latest in use item, which has completely transformed uh, the sector, which is meta or the metaverse, and how this is going to influence restaurants. There are many youngsters here, and we are just or to start asking ourselves, how are things going to change? For me, there are certain things that are really important. Firstly, we need to start thinking in 3D. To date, everything that we've done is in 2D, how we read. But this is flat, we read in flat. What happens when we include a volume to this? What happens when reality uh, increases or virtual re reality intervenes? We're going to see met metaverses, very different kinds of metaverses. Facebook has uh, launched this, started this race, but they're going to be other companies, other institutions. And we're even going to see metaverses of countries in this case. And the third thing is that we need to start thinking and when we talk about this idea of being present, that changes. If we look back in time, in the past, what was important in digital environments was text. Then photos became important. And now, undoubtedly, it's videos that are important. But all of these kinds of content, what it does is we generate it in a in a face-to-face -face, uh, environment that then we convert it to a digital environment when we put it into different social media. What happens when all of this content is actually generated in a virtual surrounding? What happens if we've got a digital twins and we're all going to have a digital twin within this virtual uh, surrounding that can work, that can meet up with people, that can attend an event, that can go to a party and that can cook and that may have a restaurant and that may even be able to eat. 
and I have no doubt at all that many of you are going to be able to develop your professional skills a lot earlier than you think within these new virtual environments where once again it's going to be a life that's parallel to the current life where continents are generated they're not taking from the present but they're generated within a virtual world I have no doubt that we're going to be going quickly into a digital world that in very very short space of time we'll appreciate more the real world than the digital world i'm thought i'm sure we're going to value far more what gives us emotion the human human world but for me that's the challenge for humanity being able to manage this balance strike a balance between online and offline between uh, digital and face-to-face uh, -face with a clear goal which is to guarantee the best development of humankind but based on a clear premise which is online success depends upon excellence offline never forget that digital excellence technological excellence depends upon the excellence of people thank you so much and welcome to a new kind of hotel and catering thank you so much Diego let's now just have a wee workshop with all of you. I'm going to organize a wee workshop using a digital app in this case. So let's see what our students think. And to do that, you may have in your mobile some data. If not, can you connect to the Cursal Wireless, which is Cursal Free in five or 10 seconds? Can you connect to the uh, Cursals Wireless Network, and then there's a QR code up on the screen. You should be able to read it with your mobile. And if not, on the right, you've got www. You can see it up on the screen. Bueno, vamos a hacer esta encuesta. Es importante que todos... It's really important that you actually all get the QR code on your mobile or either, either that or connect to the URL that you can see up there. José me ha dicho que la primera pregunta que va... And the first questions are going to pop up. There are five, five simple, simple questions because this is a survey, a questionnaire. We want to know what you think. And Marie José said to me that the first question is the most important that she's ever asked at a conference. So please reply to it responsibly. The rem rem rest of them doesn't matter. You got it all? You got your QR code? If not? I think the QR code is always going to be out there, but it's important that you get it. Is there anybody that doesn't have that QR code or that can't connect? In class, you're going to be with your mobile all day. Come on. Wakey, wakey. And let's move on to the first question, the one, most important one. The most important one in the whole of the Congress. Right. Thank you. Are you ready? You have to reply to it and then say validate. Okay. Who's going to win the league this year? The Real? Marie Jose, you really put your foot in it there, didn't you? Bueno, bueno, hay un empate. There's almost a tie. Ahí, ahí, yo creo que estamos bueno, en bueno, San Sebastián. Bueno, 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 bueno. Tenemos... We're in San Sebastián, so we should leave it right there, Diego. Well, there is a tie. Okay, I'm going to show you the code again in case someone doesn't have it yet. That's your last chance. Creo, creo que ahora toma una dimensión, María José, que no tenía antes. Now the code is uh, more important than before, isn't it, María José? Well, you'll have the code. If not, you can go in through the URL. 
Okay, there's almost the time. Bueno, ya. Done. Let's continue. Second question. How important is digitization in the food industry? Buenísimo, buenísimo. Bueno, ahí... Bueno, ahí tenéis... There you have the QR code in case someone still doesn't have it. Okay, let's go on to the next question. Third question. What do you believe is the main hurdle to be able to achieve digital transformation in a, a catering business? Many people are participating, most of you. Next question. And we're almost finished. What are the what do you think are deliveries and dark kitchens for restaurants? Are trend um, something negative for the industry or a new competitor? We go on to the next question, which is the last question. When do you think the first robotized restaurant uh, will open in the Basque Country? Okay, we have the answers. And now I'm going to ask uh, different colleagues uh, to join me up here. First of all, a great professional, also a wonderful friend. And uh, Edu, before I forgot to uh, mention the Galdaka uh, Catering School. Sorry, Edu. I do apologize. And a reference in this uh, digital transformation is uh, one of the uh, colleges you uh, saw in the videos, Leyoa, where they uh, feed 1,000 people every day, Yvonne. Wonderful professionals, uh, passionate, and that love their job. In Guipuzcoa, we have the bank, Paloma. Thank you. She works with us in the bioeconomy uh, network. And then in Alaba, we have Xavier from Divide. Another colleague uh, that also works in digital transformation. Please take a seat. Okay, I'm from Arzanda. We don't have uh, uh, Joseba, but we have Anna. Anna, welcome. A great innovation uh, lab. 
and they are working on many new products and new food products, working with local uh, producers to be able to make use of all the food waste that we generate in the colleges. And once again, from Vitoria, Iñaki, to see if we could avoid uh, coming on stage, but uh, also w we welcome also the college from uh, Gamarra. Enrique, we have the robot here. Maybe our colleagues can get a drink and get a beer. But they're telling me that all our students, and those that didn't, didn't pass many exams, so you're not getting a beer. You're just seeing it, but you cannot drink it. So now let's talk about the different uh, answers uh, we saw before in the questionnaire. There's more than 300 people uh, voting for each of the questions. So let's see what the teachers have to say about this. Let's uh, show them what the result is. Iñaki, you have the most difficult one. You're from uh, Alaba, so then. Yes, and I'm sorry you didn't mention uh, our team, El Alavés. And if we're not doing things uh, that well, maybe mm, I believe someone else shouldn't be there. La Real is right now the uh, first and will probably be winning. Bueno, el resultado ha sido 14% el the result was 14% Real Madrid, then uh, La Real and 48% Athletic de Bilbao. Y la tecnología en la hostelería. El 52% de la sala ha dicho que es muy importante y el 40% que es importante. Y solo el 8% que no es. O sea, que es poco importante. Vale, pero podría decir algo de la primera antes. Un... Sí. <laughs> Could I say something about the first one for, before we go on to this one? No, we're, we went on to the second question. Yes. Of the three, El Atletic is always going to be the biggest uh, team. And having said this, we're really generous, so I really hope that the league is won by uh, your team, La Real. And going on to the next question, I clearly see that the answer is uh, the first one, because most of our students uh, are really smart, and that's why uh, they uh, provided this answer. Okay, let's uh, give the microphone to Xavier and let's go on to the third question. What do you believe is the main hurdle for digital transformation in a catering business? Training and knowledge, which is a 37%, investment, 19%, and a resistance to change that wins with a 44%. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm more from the Basconia. So I also wanted to speak about our basketball teams. We always need to mention sports uh, before going to the answer. Well, resistance to change obviously is um, stopping many changes and um, inclusion of technology. But the pandemic has showed that some circumstances can accelerate this change in a significant manner. And in fact, what we've seen in this uh, past few months is exactly that. A big technology development before a situation that wasn't foreseen, I believe this will change uh, the experience in future years. Okay, thank you. Let's go on to the next question. What do you believe the deliveries and dark kitchens will be for the industry in the future? A trend at 17%. 60% an opportunity and uh, uh, someone to, to compete with uh, the rest. Well, any of them. I really wasn't sure what to vote for. I do believe it can become a trend, but I also see it as an opportunity. I really believe it's an opportunity, but it was difficult for me to choose. 
And now we go on to the last, last part. When do you think the first robotized restaurants uh, will exist in the Basque Country? Some people in two years are 33%, in five years are 30%, and in 10 years are 37%. Before anything, I have to say I vote for La Real to uh, win this year. Last three. The third answers are telling us that this is something that will happen, the technology uh, will be here. We don't know exactly how long it will take. And I think two, five, ye ten years, it doesn't matter. What's uh, true is that it's going to happen, and our students need to be prepared to work in that environment and to uh, create that kind of environment. We work in smart environments, and we're making the most of these opportunities, and this is one more. We have to be trained so that our restaurants are the best, and maintain the quality and the stars that they uh, have uh, up till now. Edu. Edu. As a great uh, professional and a wonderful person that is part of the um, network of uh, applied bioeconomics, could you tell us about your experience in the network? Could you tell us about uh, what we do in our department? Uh, how do the colleges uh, work? In a couple of minutes, could you tell us about your personal experience? Because you're one of the benchmarks uh, for this network in circular economy with everything you're doing in, in Galdacao. You have two minutes. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to speak uh, about this experience and summarize in a very few words and uh, from a general perspective. Because I know very well each of the uh, college uh, centers uh, here represented. We work in a collaborative manner with one only aim, and that is to face the challenges of the future. In this last question, you talked about uh, how long it would take uh, to have uh, mm, these new technologies in our restaurants. New technologies that have to do with the challenges that we face. But the main thing uh, that should be pointed out, and that's how I see it, not only the sphere of a circular economy, that have uh, many elements that have to do with the 2030 agenda for the Basque Country, is that we have the most valuable thing, and that is the human side of things. And the uh, great talent that is here represented through the students of our uh, catering uh, colleges. That's the most important thing. Because uh, they are our, our raison d'etre. If not, we wouldn't be able to um, do anything. They will be providing sustainability for future generations. They are the ones that will be working together with other uh, professionals uh, that we have in the colleges to be able to move forward. We analyze the impact of the sector at an environmental level. We establish uh, measurement values to be able to see how these indicators evolve, but even beyond uh, segregating waste uh, adequately, we have uh, small initiatives that uh, contribute to sustainability. Reduction of plastics, for example, adequate separation of uh, waste products, and uh, providing an added value. Instead of having waste, now mm, we have a material that can be reused. And little by little, all of us that are part of this uh, community are contributing to be able to achieve our goal. Bueno, pues vamos a ir We're almost finished now with this uh, session on um, digitization, but there is a song by Anton Sarmiento that says that it's uh, time to say thank you.
so I want to thank you. And if we could f please have uh, the music in the background. I want to thank all the students and teaching staff participating in the pandemic in a very special project. And Edu defined it uh, really well. Here you have a, a term that is the, the first of all, and that's uh, the one created by the uh, teaching staff of vocational training. Our Deputy Minister Jorge Arevalo, Nico, Ricard, they are all here with us. Thanks to them, we've been able to create a vocational training solidarity network. This project were six VT colleges from Bifkaya, Alaba, and Gipuzkoa. During the pandemic, have been able, we've been able to get together and uh, work in our kitchens with um, Basque products, local products. We've cooperated with uh, other companies, with other uh, government departments like sustainability and environment uh, departments and social policy department. We've worked together with them with one common goal, and that is to feed those uh, thousands of people because we were able to open uh, to others and offer this uh, um, uh, solidarity uh, menus every week. So the uh, farming uh, colleges provided us with all the products they had in their fields because plants are alive and continue to grow. They collected these products and uh, took them to the churches. In your kitchens, in your uh, vocational training colleges kitchens, we uh, worked on this uh, food and this food was brought to uh, people in need. So as we see there, we're not what we have. We are what we are able to give. So the vocational training students and teaching staff has uh, have worked uh, together. And we said this in this conference, because vocational training in the Basque Country is different uh, because of our hearts. We will have robots, digitization, technology, but we have what's even more important, and that's that we work together in networks. And those uh, food banks, those people from uh, uh, the Caritas NGOs, the people that have received the food, people from other countries that are here in San Sebastian and that uh, uh, for months hadn't tasted a chocolate cake, or children that were in the queues of the food banks, uh, they uh, were able to get uh, uh, food. Uh, they were able to get those uh, breakfasts that you uh, provided from your kitchens. So thank you. Thank you from the bottom of uh, my heart. You are the best in the world, and you've uh, chosen a wonderful career. Thank you for choosing uh, vocational training. I congratulate you. Uh, for doing so. And the most important thing in the world is what you're doing. You're feeding people. You have a wonderful future where the present, the past, and the future is something we will work on together. The future is yours, but you need to believe in it. You need to uh, put your hearts into it. You ne we need to uh, work together hand in hand, and that way we will be able to reach out to others. And now the representatives of the government and the conference organizers uh, um, receive this uh, round of applause from our students. I would like to congratulate everyone. Gracias a todos y a todas por... 
Thank you, everyone, for sharing this uh, afternoon with us. Thank you, Jorge, Nico, Ricard, John, Technica's uh, director. Thank you for uh, joining us. And uh, if it's OK with you, Diego, we finish this session here. I would like to also thank the directors of the different colleges. And now uh, we um, close this session.